Good day, I am Katrin Piumpok from PSKM 2H1 and I'm gonna report about Chapter 6, Some Important Annotations. And to note, this is just a continuation report from page 98, second paragraph from the topic, Some Important Annotations from the Translation of Austin Craig of Results Annotation in in the successors. So, number one is the third paragraph. So, the third paragraph talks about in the alleged victory of Morga over the Dutch ships, the latter found upon the bodies of five Spaniards who lost their lives in that combat. Little silver boxes filled with prayers and invocations to the saints. Here would seem the origin of the anting anting of the modern Tolesan which are also of a religious character. So in this, during this time, Philippines have exported silk from and to Japan. So the merchandise is a very high quality. This is just an illustration of Tolisans. So fourth paragraph. So in fourth paragraph, for the fear of uprising and loss of Spain's sovereignty over the islands, the inhabitants were disarmed, leaving them exposed to the harassing of a powerful and dreaded enemy. So during this time, native Filipinos were disarmed for the fear of being overpowered since the natives have been there and they know the terrain very much. So they have been um, harassed and undermined by the so-called Spain sovereignty. Number three is the fifth paragraph. So in fifth paragraph, the fact that a, at first the Philippines were a source of expense to Spain instead of a profitable in spite of the tremendous sacrifices of the Filipino their practically gratitude labor in building and equipping the galleons, and despite to the tribute, the tariffs, and other imposed and monopolies. So during this time, Filipinos were slaves, or just almost like slaves, since they were um, harassed by the Spanish government. They were forced to work, they were forced to um, build ships, um, contribute money, even though they don't have these equal rights and many harassment. This is an example of galleons who arrived in different islands in the Philippines, just an illustration. Sixth and seventh paragraph. So this sixth and seventh paragraph talks about that among the Filipinos who aided the government when the Chinese Manila revolted, Argonzola says that there were 4,000 Pampangas armed after the waste of their land with bows and arrows, short lances, shields, and broad and long daggers. So this is an example of a warrior, native warrior back then. So the loss of two Mexican galleons in 1603 called forth no comment from the religious chroniclers who were accustomed to see the avenging hand of God in the misfortunes and accidents of their enemies. So this is just an example where the two galleons were lost in the sea and nowhere to be found. And two galleons means two big ships. Eight to ten paragraph. So in here, the Filipino chiefs who went with Spanish expedition against Ternate and Molocas in 1605 with Don Guillermo Palaot, Maestro de Campo, and Captain Francisco Palaot, Juan Lit, Luis Lont, and Agustin Lont, they had 400 Tagalogs and Pampangans with them. So this is just an example of or a depiction of Filipino tribe chief back then. And the Cebuanos drew a pattern on the skin before stating into a tattoo. These are the pintados or tattooed indigenous Cebuano Visayan people. And these traditions were almost lost completely 
as well as the mythology and genealogies of which the early historians tell because again of the ever-changing of different um, colonization, different cultures have embedded in our own culture that have started to diminish the different sets of native culture in the Philippines. So this is an example, or this is a depiction of a pintados, which is a indigenous um, tattooed people. So pintados mostly composed of um, tribal uh, war men, warriors, and different, I mean, chief male, they're also female, but their tattoos are kind of different and their tattoos tell stories and symbolize um, many heroic deeds they've done. 11th and 12th paragraph. So in here, the easy virtue of the native woman is not solely to the simplicity with which they obey their natural instincts, but much more due to a religious belief of which Father Kirino tells. In the journey after the death of Kalhuatiran, the abode of the abode of the spirits. So during this time, women women would cross a bridge in which they will not be able to cross unless they have a lover or a husband that will lend them a hand. And during this time in the Spanish um Spanish conquest. Lots of women were um, done suicide rather than sacrifice their chastity at that time. So you could say they were harassed again by the Spanish conquest. So this is just an example of a native woman back then, just as an illustration. And furthermore, the religious annals of the early missions are filled with countless instances where native maidens choose death rather than sacrifice their chastity to the threats and violence of the encomenderos and Spanish soldiers. And Filipinos like fish better when it is commencing to turn bad is another of those prejudices which the Spaniards like all other nations have just like there are American dish that, that does not appeal to the European and there are European dish that does not appeal to the American, so, so on and so forth. And Filipinos' favorite fish dish at that time is the bagoong, and whoever tried to eat it knows that it is not considered improved when tainted. So this is an example of bagoong as of now. And um, yeah, different localities have different a way of making bagoong or ginamos here in Mindanao. So, and it's kind of tasty. Depends on how it is made though. 13 to 15 paragraph. So in here, ancient Filipinos had minstrels who had memorized songs telling their genealogies and of the deed ascribed to their deities. It was probably on the site of the Tagalog one which was destroyed by fire on the first coming of the Spaniards that established in the 1584 was in La Mayan or also called as Santa Ana. So during this time, Filipinos love to sing. They chant songs, which tells their heroic deeds, their adventure, their daily lives, and etc. cetera. So um, lots of songs have been lost due to um, many circumstances, but as of now, they are being preserved. So this is just an example of a tribe who sings songs to their gods to help them cure someone's illness. So there were this foundry, canon foundry in Manila, and among the Malati residents were the families of Raha Matanda and Ra Suleiman. So their family. Um, when it comes to men, the men had various positions in Manila, and the women were very expert in lace making, thus making them, and uh, making them lace making their occupation. Sixteen to eighteen paragraph. So in here, there was not a province or town of the Filipinos that resisted conversion 
or do not want it may have been true of the civilized natives. So, according to Gaspan de San Agustin, there would have been no fruit of the and evangelic doctrine gathered for the infidels wanted to kill the friars who come who came to preach to them so natives who are in the down side of the mountain have been very open in the conversion but the natives who are up there in the mountains have very strong beliefs when it comes to um their batalas their gods and goddesses their deities their spirits and have not very open when it comes to conversion of this evangelic doctrine, which caused them to be so aggressive and killed and tried to kill many missionaries during conversion. That's why the friars have decided that they would have to go with a escort, which means soldiers that if the natives who try to go against the conversion will be killed and the chiefs will be killed. So, yeah, and this time, slavery is very prominent from the losing tribe people. A lot of natives are killed, slaved, and harassed. And this is just a small depiction of, or just a summary of what, natives have been done they were used to um kill the trees um mine the mine their own land and pay some monopolies and monies to the said authorities so the valley of results annotation so this is what results annotations and the Valley of Results Annotations talks about different perspectives for how Filipinos have been um, harassed and mistreatment under the Spanish co uh, conquest. And even before that, even before the Spanish conquest, Filipino natives have been civilized in their own. They have societies, they have leaders, they have their own government. It's just that it's different compared to the Spain government. So that's why they are trying to erase those ways and embed their own culture from the Europe and have this monopoly under them. And according to Rizal, he stated that if the book Successos de las Islas Filipinas succeeds to awaken your consciousness of our past already effaced from your memory and to rectify what has been falsified and slandered, then I have not worked in vain. And with this as a basis, however small it may be, we shall be able to study the future. So he says that through his annotations, Filipinos should widen and broaden their understanding on how Filipinos were treated by Spaniards and under Spanish government how the so-called missionaries or conversion turned into a slavery of the native Filipinos back then. So that would be the end of my report. Thank you.